Have you ever wanted to animate your scientific plots or data visualizations like this? Or probably you have tested so many tools without knowing how to customize them, ending up hopeless and frustrated without getting the final result that you were looking for. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to animate your scientific plots using Matplotlib. Ladies and gentlemen, you are watching numerous channel and do not forget to check out other videos. First things first, we are checking out the documentation of the Funk Animation class in the Matplotlib package. Funk Animation takes several arguments, one of them is the figure, the other one is the function, the other one is the frame or number of frames, and a couple of optional arguments. Fig is the figure object used to get needed events such as draw or resize. Funk is the function to call at each frame. It's a callable that you have to pass to the funk animation. Its signature is like this and you have to pass the frame as the first argument to it. You can also pass frames as an iterable or integer or a generator function and it's optional also. There are a couple of other optional arguments that you can pass like init funk that is a function used to draw a clear frame. Other important and practical arguments are like interval, which is the delay between frames in milliseconds, and the repeat option, which you can pass as true or false, which specifies whether the animation repeats when the sequence of frames is completed. The other option is whether the bleating is used to optimize drawing. It's boolean valued, so you have to pass true or false. There are many other options, but I have already mentioned the practical ones, which are used in creating animated plots. The Funk Animation class also has a method called save in which you can save your animation in different formats. Now it's time to get to the practical example. Let's write code for an example in which we plot a function, then gradually we change this code into a code in which animates that plot. Make sure you have installed NumPy and Matplotlib using pip install NumPy and Matplotlib. I'm importing func animation from matplotlib.animation, then I have defined a function to actually plot it. For this purpose, I pass x and y values to the fxy function. After discretizing the horizontal and vertical axis, I use the mesh grid function to actually create a grid out of those discretized axes. plt.subplot returns a tuple of figure and axis. Then I use the axe.imshow to plot a heat map. For that, I pass the z value and a color map over here, the jet, and the option extent specifies the maximum and minimum values of the vertical and horizontal axis on the heat map, as you see in the plot shown in the figure one window. Now let's extend this chunk of code into a code which animates our plot. For this purpose, I define a variable called anim which stores the object returned by the func animation class. As I've already explained, the func animation class accepts a couple of arguments in which we have to provide and pass to the func animation. We have already defined the figure, but we haven't defined the update function, which is the next step to define. We have already passed 400 frames to the frames argument, and for the interval option, the delay between each frame is specified as 25 milliseconds. The blit option is passed as false, you can play around with the options to see how it affects your animation. Now let's see how to define the update function which is passed to the func animation. For defining the update function, we have to remember that it has to obey a certain criteria. That is, the first argument has to be the frame. Inside the update function, I update the value of z as a function of x and y and the frame. This adds that dynamism. Also, I call the method setData on the heat map. Then I update the heat map with the current value of z. Then I return the heat map as an iterable, here as a list. Now all we have to do is run this chunk of code to see the animated plots of the function fxy. This is the general structure of actually making animations in matplotlib. You could easily generalize this chunk of code to any kind of plotting style. Now that we have animated our plot, the other question would be how the change of parameters like playing around with the frame parameter changes the way the plot is animated. Obviously, if you change the sign of the values added to the x depending on the frame, the direction in which the plot is animated changes. We can also change the amount in which the frame value is divided by. Intuitively, this affects the amount in which the plot is shifted on each frame. And if we run the code again, we feel that the velocity in which the plot is shifted to the 
right or left directions has changed noticeably. Now that we have animated our plot, another question would be how we can save our animation. We know that Funk Animation returns an object which has a save method. After storing an instance of Funk Animation class in the anim variable, we only have to call the save method on the anim object then pass the name of the file in which we want to save our review. We can also pass an optional argument called writer and specify the type of the writer over here ffmpeg. Since the writer is optional, you can actually remove that part and just pass the name of the file that you want to save as your video. After running this chunk of code, you've got to wait for a couple of seconds or minutes depending on the amount of data that you're animating and the file heatmap.mp4 would be saved. Then you can open that file to check out whether the animated plot is working properly. So now that the file has been saved, we open the heatmap.mp4 file. By the way, if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel and liked this video, please consider liking this video and subscribing to the channel to not lose future content on matplotlib, animation, and other programming tips and tricks. As you can see, the animated plots have been saved properly into an mp4 format video that we can use and share with others. We have already discussed most of the practical options, but there remains a couple of other ones. One of those options is the frame in which we can pass an integer or an editable. Over here, I reduce the number of frames. Now, if I run the code, the animation finishes fast because I have reduced the number of frames, obviously. Now I can pass whether I want the animation to be repeated or not. For this, I can pass the repeat option, which is a boolean valued option option and pass the false value so the animation would not be repeated after the sequence of frames is completed. I guess these are the most practical options available for creating a beautiful animation for your data visualization or scientific plots. As always, see you all later.